Welcome to Learning Mode. Today we've decided to, to go live. Um, I know the children are off for the summer, so looking at some little ideas and activities that you can do at home with your child just to keep that education going and that don't cost a lot of money and don't take a lot of time to organise. So I'm going to look at two activities today. One is bingo and another one is a little drawing activity. So bingo can be really, really versatile. It can be used for literacy, it can be used for maths, it can be used really for anything, and it doesn't take anything to set up. Now, I would tend to generally use a whiteboard for bingo, um, because you can just draw a little grid on there and write the numbers on, and your child can choose the numbers, and it's really, really easy. But just for the purpose of the video, I've drawn out some little grids on here and I've done it purposefully. I haven't sat with a ruler, I haven't done it all really neatly because this is just how you need to do it. So the first way I would think about using bingo is maybe to help with the alphabet or those initial sounds. You can use it for the end sounds within words. It's up to you how you use it. And basically all you're asking your child to do is you give them a little grid. It can be six letters, it can be four, it can be ten, it can be whatever you want it to be. I've drawn a little grid of nine and you ask them to put different letters in there. And then what you'll be doing with those letters is showing your child items from around the house or just giving them the word. So you might say, okay, first word on my list of bingo is apple. Do you have the letter that apple begins with? And if they do, then they get their pen and they cross it off. The whole idea being is that when they get the all the letters crossed off, they shout out bingo. This is a really great game to play if you've got two or three children at home or some friends over, because it becomes a little fun activity and a bit of a competition. You can even have some prizes. Again, so you might say, okay, I want to say the word dog. Do you have a letter that, the, the letter that begins with dog on there? Oh yes, they do, they have D, so they'll cross that off. And it just goes on through that way. I would recommend that you write down the words that you've called out because then you can keep a record of it and it means that uh, no cheating can happen, which we sometimes have happening in our house. So um, it's just a good way of keeping a little record. And again, can be a really fun game, takes no time at all to set up and no time at all to play. And it can be lots of fun and really just helps children with those initial signs without having to sit and study words. Another way of using bingo is to help with addition and on here I've got two different grids because there's lots of different ways that you can approach this. So for example, you can have a nine grid, nine square grid and just ask them again, whatever you choose, you put in nine numbers from one to ten, nine numbers from one to twenty. It depends on what you want to explore with your child and how proficient your child is in addition. And again, what you'll do is just call out some addition number sentences. So you might say, mm, my first question is one plus two, and then they have to calculate three, and then they will cross it off on their grid. You might say my next number is four plus four. They have to look, is it eight? No, they don't have it. But again, other children may have it, they may have cho chosen it on their grid. So it, just a really fun way of really thinking about that mental maths and adding a little bit of competition with it. You can also do it the opposite way, so you can actually give them the answer and they have to match the question with it. So you can say, my answer is six, and they have to go and see if they can find a question that makes six. And you can make it as difficult or as easy as you like. I can, you can always swap these around as well for subtraction. So again, put the numbers on, but instead of an addition calculation, you're giving a subtraction calculation. And it's the same here, that you're actually writing a, a, uh, subtraction calculations. I would say to actually maybe prepare that grid for your children because that can be quite a tricky one for them until they get a wee bit more confident with it. So that's bingo and a quick snapshot of what you can do with a piece of paper over the summer. My second little activity is a really fun one. It's one for helping with those tricky words that children tend to get stuck on, that they spell incorrectly, they find it difficult to read. And this is a little one to just really add a little memory to the word, just to get them thinking about it and maybe put that little memory tab in their brain that they can think about the picture that they drew. So it's called doodle a word. So you basically give them a word and they will make little doodles, make it into shapes, make it into little characters. And again, it just helps with that visual representation and helping them think about those different letters and to trigger a little memory in there. So I've got was in here and as you can see, upside down, I turned my was, my W into a little smiley face. My A, I turned into a weird looking little fish. 
and my S I turned into a snake. So all you do is give your child a nice big word on a piece of paper and ask them what could you turn it into and it stems loads of conversation, brings out that creativity and again just adds a little bit of memory to help them maybe think about those letters and oh I remember was it has an A and it because I drew a fish and then it helps them with that spelling and that reading. So two little fun very quick activities that take no money, don't take very much time to set up. If you do have any questions do please free feel free to comment or to leave me a little message and I'll get back to you and do visit learningmo.com or our YouTube channel for loads more ideas of keeping the children occupied over the summer. Um, I hope you've enjoyed listening and I'm sure we will be seeing you all very soon.